Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, our webinar on engaging and attracting the best talent. Um, and it's part of our Web 100 series um, to really kind of explore and analyze um, how corporate websites are performing against the different kind of stakeholder audiences. Um, before we start, um, what I'd like to do is to just introduce the team who are presenting today. Firstly, myself, Rich Six, and I'm uh, Chief Digital Officer at Black Sun. Um, Erica? Yes. Hi, my name is Erica Susanto. I'm the Head of Knowledge and Innovation at Black Sun. I take care of all things research related uh, at Black Sun from thought leadership to research to support across all of our consultancy work. Great, thanks Erica. And Dan? Hi guys, uh, Dan Cowley, Head of Digital Strategy. So responsible for understanding stakeholder requirements and implementing them online to really drive kind of uh, stakeholder value. Great, thanks Dan. So um, what we thought we'd cover today is firstly just give you a bit of an intro into Black Sun. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, I just have a few minutes on that literally. Um, and then we're gonna go into the Web 100, how we uh, conduct the research, what we look for uh, in career sites and uh, related uh, communications. And then we'll share some key finding as best practice examples um, that we'll take you through. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions as we go through, feel free to use the chat, no problem at all. Um, and also we've structured the presentation to allow us some questions at the end. Um, so um, feel free to, to ask us more as we get towards the end of the presentation. Okay. Um, so moving on in terms of just introducing, um, before we introduce Black Sun, um, just thought it'd be useful to give you a little QR code. What that does is takes you to the link for the Web 100. Um, and it has all of our previous results from, um, you know, looking at the corporate narrative, investor relations, um, sustainability and so on. And later today, we'll be publishing the findings of today's research in careers area. So feel free to go to that page and you'll be able to see all the results of our latest Web 100 research. Um, in terms of Black Sun, just a little bit about us. Um, for those of you that don't know us, we're an international stakeholder communications company. And what we help do is uh, help our clients to really engage, grow and connect with their different stakeholder groups, whether that be through investor communication, sustainability communication, talking to their internal and employees and prospective employees and customers, um, and really helping also drive digital transformation through corporate sites, stakeholder microsites, career sites, and so on. So really integrated stakeholder communications offer, all centered around the purpose of making businesses more valued by their different stakeholder groups. And so from a digital service viewpoint, we offer an integrated suite of services, really designed to help enrich the digital experience that our clients offer to their stakeholders. So from consultancy under Dan's good offices around digital strategy, benchmarking, obviously underpinned by the research we're going to talk about today, and understanding user needs analysis and so on. Great creative experience and uh, digital design, user experience uh, creation. Um, advising clients on you know, the right content, you know, overall strategy and planning, editorial services and so on. And of course, we develop, create uh, websites, intranets, um, apps, and so on. Um, and of course, if required, host and provide content management systems for them. And provide ongoing support through content production management, you know, announcements, and so on um, for all of our clients. So a really integrated service suite. Um, and just to flick through um, you know, a few pieces of work that we do, uh, there's a great site, um, Cokedale Hellenic, that we look after, obviously, as part of that. There's the um, careers area that uh, we work with them on to uh, create that and their different country sites. We also um, develop specific career sites. Um, this one will go in the corporate site for Inmar site, but it's a particularly good um, careers area. And we'll show you a bit more about this later on when Dan uses one of the examples. Um, we also do um, internet and apps um, for internal communication um, and uh, you know, to really help organizations connect with and communicate with their, with their people wherever they are in the world, regardless of whether they've got uh, you know, an actual account or not. Um, we can help reach those uh, internal audiences. And uh, internal comms is a particularly nice example, I think, from uh, what Coca-Cola do internally and um, to connect with their internal audiences uh, on the left here. And on the right hand side, there is a, a commitment campaign that we did with Compass to really um, evidence some of their values and commitments through their internal audiences. And of course, we do film, which is clearly a great way of engaging internal audiences 
and so Scott Mears and here we did um, some uh, ships of the year, which was basically filming employees uh, in various vessels across the globe to bring together the life of their, uh, their people stories. And also here was a um, uh, basically a purpose video for DLG um, that we created really to use their employees to tell the story of their overall corporate narrative. You can find these uh, examples on our YouTube account or uh, websites if you wish. However, that's more than enough uh, about us. Um, so five minutes in. Um, Dan, do you want to pick up on the Web 100 and just explain a bit of the backdrop, why we do it and uh, what we look for? Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Rich. So um, I guess for, for those that know, obviously, the Web 100 is a really important thing for us in terms of understanding what best practice looks like. And now in its seventh year, it allows us to really understand what best practice is and to make recommendations. So we can then start saying, OK, what does good look like? And not just in terms of our opinion, but it's based on 200 metrics. And those are kind of questions that we're asking around what best practice looks like and how the site you know, interacts and the functionality that's behind it. But on top of that, we also then have our own understanding, obviously, you know, working in the industry, understanding the requirements. But we're also basing it on a myriad of other kind of areas. So when we're looking at, you know, things like the ICO regulations, things around government requirements, Google Analytics and learning from the work that we're doing and thinking about, obviously, those, you know, different audience specific kind of requirements, whether it be the FRC and the IR society or beyond in terms of, you know, integration with ATSs and everything else. In terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, what we look for, there are two very key ingredients, content and experience. Content for us today is gonna to be obviously careers focused, although, you know, for those that have been to the other seminars, you'll realize that obviously we have a, a broad kind of narrative across each one of those areas. And also then thinking about experience, and this is really around understanding what best practice looks like. So not just maybe having content in the right place, but how is easy is it to engage with? You know, is it done in a really nice creative way? Do I understand how I can find things? Is the taxonomy correct? And everything else in between. So for us, it really is an important kind of area to understand what best practice looks like. And what we've looked at again this year for, for the second year was analytics and starting to think about audiences and how they're viewing content. So what content are they looking for? What search terms are they using? And what is their kind of the, the visit profile, if you will, in terms of where they're going and what they're looking at? So we looked at kind of these key areas for uh, obviously in terms of the, uh, the different types of audiences and you'll see here the careers audiences are engaging with the site in terms of you know uh, with the page views which are on the, the left hand side but we're only getting a short window of time to really engage with them on a, a kind of a grand scale and what that means is I think that people are very directing directive in terms of what they're looking for and the search terms align with that in terms of wanting to find information about opportunities and graduates and you know MBAs but there's also elements there around training there's also elements around diversity and culture thinking about people and what it's like to work for the business and also then responsibility as well so what we're seeing is that audiences are also starting to look at things like values diversity and inclusion culture those kind of elements when it comes to business not just simply what is the role can i find a marketing role can i find one I'm looking for? and going beyond that when we look at those terms we're seeing, seeing interesting elements that we'll talk about in a moment around things like mission vision um you know things around obviously sick pay you know what are the benefits what are the how am i being supported by the organization and it's very much aligned with what we're seeing in the press now and things around the uh, the great resignation kind of campaigns and beyond in terms of you know, companies actually realizing that employees are empowering themselves to make decisions about what they want from an employer, uh, especially after obviously the last 18 months that we've had, maybe people seeking a better work-life balance and beyond. Thanks, Dan. So I think, um, I mean, that's, I think that's really interesting in terms of, um, you know, some of the trends that we're seeing through the analytics. I mean, I think what we're seeing from what you're saying there, Dan, is that, um, you know, we're seeing a much greater emphasis on, if you like, the rich narrative, you know, uh, prospective employees really looking for, you know, what the vision is for the organisation, you know, what its purpose is, um, and uh, perhaps the wider culture and, uh, you know, diversity type views. Um, and I think that's a, a real shift over the last kind of three or four years that we've uh, been doing the analysis. And uh, what we've seen in the uh, three focus areas, because we wanted to just pull out three kind of key themes, I think, for this year's research on the, on the careers area of the website. Um, and the first is just exactly that point, which is around really articulating and unifying the workforce behind a common purpose. Um, and Erica will uh, talk a bit more about some of the results we found in that area. 
Secondly, a much more overt kind of attraction of talents, you know, talking more about, you know, the diversity and inclusion policies, about culture and values and so on. Um, and thirdly, really making the corporate website work hard or the careers website work really hard to drive recruitment, you know, a growth in terms of the number of uh, people that can actually, uh, you know, uh, apply for a job or, you know, register a CV and so on. So those are the three kind of themes that we're, we're seeing. So uh, we'll take you through the examples a little bit more. Um, but that's why we really came up with the theme this year around how well does your website serve your purpose? Because um, it's actually something we found across all of the different stakeholder groups this year. So Erica, in terms of um, giving employees a common purpose and unifying them around that kind of sense of uh, single destination, just tell us a bit uh, about what you found in the research. Right, thank you, Rich. Um, Dennis mentioned, you know, the great resonation. Uh, increasingly in the last 18 months, employees are leaving or thinking about leaving their current jobs. And because the last 18 months have been, you know, proved to be transformative in terms of life experiences. And it caused some, a lot of people to think about uh, their shift in priorities in terms of, um, um, of finding employment. So we do see that as purpose um, become more uh, increasingly uh, viewed as important across the wider stakeholder, You'll see this slide from the first webinar. You would have seen the increasing trend of purpose communications among the FTSE 100 corporate websites since 2019, with almost 80% of the uh, companies communicating the purpose on their website. And many of them are moving away from boilerplate statements, um, such as, you know, our purpose is to create value to stakeholders and shareholders alike. Um, they're starting to craft more meaningful and personalized purpose statements um, for, to reflect the authentic company brand. Um, on to the next slide. While overall there is an increased focus on purpose from wider stakeholder groups, these are not often highlighted in the career sections. So of the 79 companies stating their purpose on the website, um, you know, 52 uh, prominently put it on the homepage or have a dedicated page for it. And uh, slightly fewer actually integrate purpose into their employer brand narrative by introducing in their career sections. Uh, 43 companies do that. And um, this, uh, this gap actually uh, needs to be closed at some point and we expect that to, to reduce. And um, on to the discussions around values and culture, uh, which continue to be an integral part of the brand identity. Uh, increasingly, people are looking uh, for various metrics to assess uh, their current employer and future employers. Uh, in addition to the, what we call the hygiene factors, the wages and benefits, they look at the opportunities for advance, advancement, commitment to equity, as well as the overall uh, values of the companies and to see whether they align with their own. One of the trends we saw last year that we are continuing to see this year is companies are um, starting to just continuing talking beyond these hygiene factors of wages and benefits and discuss wider corporate narrative through culture and values. There is um, an upward trend of companies talking about their values in general with 75 companies doing so this year up from 63. However, there is still a little gap when we look at discussion of values specifically in the career section with only 66 highlighting their company values in the employer narrative. Um, and you know, there's a recent Stanford study that found that people would be willing to take a pay cut to work for a company that aligns with their values better. And so this, um, th this presents an opportunity, I think uh, it's a missed opportunity not to do so. Uh, on to discussion of culture, we observed this year that 78 companies describe their company culture in detail as part of their brand narrative. However, not all of them went on to describe the initiatives or programs that they have internally to actively embed said culture among the workforce. And again, this is increasingly something that um, employees are looking for, as Dan had mentioned in the analytics earlier. Now, another element of building an authentic employer brand is to feature employees to bring the story to life. Most FTSE 100s are already, already doing this in their career site with 62% uh, sharing employee stories to illustrate specific roles and 59% providing employee profiles to help prospective employee, employees envision what kind of people make up the workforce. 
Um, this year, though, we do see a slight uptick in preference towards utilizing wider media channels. And this, this means going beyond static articles in the websites. A little over a third of the FTSE 100 feeds in their latest stories and news around the company into the career site. And almost 40% provide links to their social media career profile. Again, providing that uh, dynamic and up-to-date stories from within the organizations. Um, enough about the stats now. Shall we see how these uh, look like, actually? Over to Dan. Zerika, well, let's uh, let's look at websites, how they're meant to be looked at. This is just obviously a highlight uh, reel in terms of what we're showcasing. You should maybe oversee uh, a browser on the screen. Um, and what I want to do is just take you through a few examples. So NN is a, a really nice one. They're, a, a, well, they're an international financial services company. So you may have heard of ABM Ambro and a few of their other kind of uh, subsidiary brands. But what they've done is created a, a really nice careers site that aligns very much with what Eric was just talking about there. And you've got obviously a bit of dynamism. You've got a very clear call to action, all things that I would say are, you know, really nice to kind of land on. But immediately the language is talking about you and how you matter to the organization. And there's things here around kind of the about the company, talking about the values, talking about diversity, inclusion, commitment to society. Um, and you'll also then see an integration with obviously key stats and numbers, introducing the business and understanding what it's like to work there. But what I really particularly like is this element of tailored job recommendations. So I can get started, I can choose my path, I can upload my resume, I can answer some questions. And for those that may have seen it as we scroll past, there is also another area of does NN fit with you? So they're asking the question of not only do you want to work here, but are you right for us? And what this does is both links go to the same place. It's a whole company match uh, system, whereby what you can do is start to fill in your details and say, okay, do I like to you know, interact with colleagues as friends or in a formal setting? And what they're doing is they're obviously then disseminating information to understand whether you're right or wrong to work for the organization. Now I've gone through this process and I scored 81%. So I've done pretty well, I think. Um, but again, just understanding that this personalization of how the business is understanding what your needs are and reflecting what I want is a really important kind of tool and a really nice thing that we've seen in terms of within the marketplace. As we look at someone like Entain, they're formerly GVC uh, group, obviously in terms of a gambling organization with lots of subsidiary brands. They've pulled together a really kind of nice kind of uh, career site. So again, entertaining the, uh, the world in terms of what they're trying to achieve, thinking about that in terms of their purpose. Obviously, integrating nice little things. You'll see a little animated GIF uh, as we scroll down, introducing different kind of uh, you know uh, workers within the business, what it's like uh, life at Entain in terms of the jobs, meeting the team, meeting the people, and obviously introducing the brand and then the culture of the organisation in terms of what it's like. And you're also seeing this area on the right hand side here where you know we're actually introducing some very key topics and again aligned with things like culture, diversity, uh, and beyond. And if I just uh, pause that there and kind of take you through, there's the video section where, again, lots of different elements kind of being discussed, introducing the teams and giving you that personalization. And obviously, that gives people a real kind of key idea of what it's like to work within the organization. And interestingly, obviously, for them, having gone through a very kind of big brand change over this past year, some of the videos still reference GVC, but I don't think anything is lost from that. I think the, the messaging is still really nice and clear. We're going to take a look at Philip Morris International now and obviously in the, the, the press yesterday looking to stop cigarette sales within the next 10 years uh, in terms of what they're obviously the business drivers and where they're going as an organization. But in terms of what they're doing from a careers point of view, obviously integrated with their, their corporate site, there's a really nice kind of campaign here around messaging of you know what it's like, what is my message for the future, where do I want to be and how do I want to kind of move forward. And what they've got is some senior members of the team in terms of uh, you know different people, handwritten notes, little transcripts. They've even kind of integrated little videos as well. And this whole principle of talking about what my hope for the future, I want to be happy, I want to be healthy, I want to develop you know my career, is a really kind of nice way of engaging users and showcasing as a business what's important to them as an organisation. So again, you know, join the the future facing teams. We've got some really nice calls to action as we scroll through as well. So we're not losing the point of, are you ready to join us? Let's get started, you know, drilling through, 
clicking through and obviously then integrating, being able to find the roles that suit me um, as I'm kind of understanding what this organization can offer me. BT um, have got a really nice career site in terms of you know, integrating some nice little functionality. They've gone with a chatbot, which is something we've seen a, a little bit over the last few years of integration in terms of technology, we obviously being able to personalize your approach. They obviously have you know, calls to action and you know, the ability to apply and search. They integrate really nicely in terms of the, uh, the social media channels as well. So they're always kind of looking at ways of implementing that thought leadership that uh, Erica was talking about. But you'll also see that there's a difference when we look at things like NN, when we look at the other elements like Entain that are talking about the culture and the values and the diversity. This is very much more functional. This is digital technology contact centers. So the terms are being used are very different as an organization. So me as a prospective employer is getting a, a very different kind of uh, you know, interaction with this in terms of what it means to work at the organization. It feels a lot more functional, but they've got some really nice elements. They've got this video that, you know, meeting the team in terms of what if I work for the company in the future and what can I create, you know, insider's view of what it's really like to work. And then you've got things around opportunities and integration with the career sections uh, around their social um, and beyond that, obviously, then in terms of uh, other areas of the site being able to navigate. But again, the differentiation between these two. Just in terms of what we've got here um, on AstraZeneca, what we wanted to just show is that obviously there's a way of integrating ATSs, absolutely fine, not a problem, HR systems and beyond. But what's really nice about this is actually integrating uh, a profile match. So again, you click on this link. If I take you through, I've already logged in. I can then see my LinkedIn results are being linked to their job selection process. I can see that I'm very much suited to a job in IT project management. No real surprises there in terms of uh, what my profile probably says about me. But again, a really nice way of personalizing the experience beyond just simply saying, okay, what are you looking for? Are you looking for marketing? Are you looking for an engineering role? Whatever it might be in terms of the organization that you're working with. The final example in this section before we move on is really around William Hill and thinking about perspective applicants and you know integrating kind of nicely and being able to kind of integrate nicely their social kind of ca campaigns and channels and beyond so here i'm linking to the career section so again i can then drill through and see that william hill okay you know welcome to william hill working for us what it's like you've obviously got the retail job sectors you've got things around tech jobs and again functional but they either go a little bit beyond that you know how we go one better so if I'm clicking on that, I can then start to see the values. I can start to see how you know, they're on my side. They're going to support me. And I can also then follow them on LinkedIn as well to find different areas. But one thing I would just highlight on this is that you know, we've got to be very careful about user journeys and understanding what users are looking for as well. Because if I then go back to my careers drop down menu, I've got a myriad of selections in terms of culture and joining a team. And I click on here to find a career and all of a sudden I'm going into a completely separate section which is then taking me to obviously their ATS system as well. So we've got to be just very mindful about signposting to make sure users understand where they're going for as well. Um, let's go through a little bit more around attracting talent, shall we, in terms of the, uh, the presentation and then drop back into uh, where we were with Erica and the team. Sure, thank you, Dan. Um, I think it's quite interesting mm. isn't it, how um, Erica, you highlighted in the, um, you know, in the, uh, stats that you shared around the fact that you know there is a growth in communicating purpose overall um, and values that perhaps less so in the careers area and when we reflect back to the stats you know that Dan showed of what people were looking for in the search terms actually there was quite mm. a emphasis around that broader purpose and vision and values if you remember in the earlier slides so mm. I think what that's telling us is there's a greater emphasis on that but there needs to be much greater work to embed those and signpost those within the careers area of the site to make it directly relevant to the talent team because that's what they're looking for. That's what prospective employers are looking for. Yes. Um, so I thought that was an interesting uh, dichotomy that we saw in the experience there. So do you want to take us through what you're saying in terms of attracting talent? Yes. That's, uh, thanks, Rich. I think you're right. Um, the trend that we're seeing, obviously, is an, an overall increase in um, em emphasizing the narrative around around the corporate and employer brand, but there is that missing link definitely from linking it from the career narrative. Uh, now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the attracting talent portion of our research. Um, we've been seeing quite a few of the marker questions go up as well this year. 
um, even before the pandemic, we have started to see a real increase in what people are looking for in terms of their expectations of CEOs and companies. And one of the things that we are seeing, um, you know, after two years of flat trend, really, the past year sees an increase in the number of introduction from uh, leadership team, from the management or for the board members in the career sections, uh, setting the values and culture tones from the top. Um, I guess this is in line with the company leadership being increasingly expected to have a presence in engaging all stakeholder groups, including employees and prospective employees. Um, even though the absolute numbers are still small, the handful who do it really um, make their organization stand out. Um, I can think of the top of my head, CCH has uh, introduced a lot of the uh, CEO introductions in different uh, places. Um, Bernie, that's Bernard Looney of BP, obviously is very vocal on uh, social media, LinkedIn in particular, so much so I see a lot of his um, feed more than I see my best friends. So I feel like I get to know him on a first name basis because of that. And um, if we go on to, you know, if companies want to win the war for talent, so to speak, um, they, are, they, they absolutely need to be providing discussion going beyond the hygiene factors of the wages and benefits. And we do see that this year, more companies are discussing um, opportunities for advancement as well as the commitment to equity as we see later. So in this slide, we see that 65% companies uh, provide information around training and development. 49% uh, talks about rewards and recognitions. Both metrics have gone up this year compared to last year. And around discussion around the commitment to equity, uh, the diversity and inclusion. Uh, have definitely seen an uptick this year, going from 77% to 88 But they still mostly do revolve around gender discussion. Um, and uh, only 35% provide diversity figures that's easily accessible from the career section. We do notice that uh, a lot of the diversity and inclusion figures are in the sustainability or ESG section. Um, in fact, some of them are in the reports, but there's a missed opportunity again if uh, by not linking that and including that in the career narrative, because obviously a company's commitment to equity is something that um, people are increasingly looking to, to see. Um, now over back to Dan to see some, uh, some examples on how this could look like. Thanks, uh, Erica. So let's take you back to the uh, the browser. You should be able to see that now on the screen. Um, so thinking about that messaging around the senior management CEO introduction of sections, we just wanted to show you Coco Hellenic, which is exactly the one that Erica referenced there. Um, obviously, you know, structuring the, uh, the kind of the careers area of the site around the uh, kind of the different departments, thinking about the types of you know user we're trying to engage to, very clear call to action about being able to search. But again, once we've then gone through this section, we're also then setting the tone in terms of what the business is looking for. And, you know, really understanding how Zoran as a CEO is kind of leading that conversation. Because the same, you know, describing the culture and the values of the business, and then that backing that up with, you know, the ability to obviously join the talent network and everything. So again, nice clear calls to action and also an integrating kind of things like social media as well. But the CEO message is really what we're showcasing in this section. Beyond that, we've got uh, a Spirex Sarco uh, example. So uh, engineering steam solutions for those that maybe don't know. This is one where I just wanted to kind of show you a couple of things before we get to the, the main meat of the kind of the, the CEO intro around <laughs> how we integrate different things. So you know, the ability to search for current vacancies, obviously having early careers and UK careers, a little bit different here where if I search, I'm actually dropping down the page. I've just dropped about 10 inches down the page, which again, I'm not sure is the best from a usability point of view. And when I drill through to something like early careers, I'm taken then to a completely separate site. So this is all around uh, Spirex uh, Life, which is their, their careers site. But again, the ability to then showcase, you know, what it's like to work for an organization, understanding who they are and what I'm trying to achieve. So if I then go back to their homepage, you'll see a very different branding look and feel. And again, understanding where I am is kind of a, a very important part of user experience in terms of what we look for. But once we're on the site, really nice in terms of the content and how it's integrated. So, you know, why work here? Why understand, you know, what it's life, uh, life in Spirex is like? And importantly for this section, 
Nick Anderson, Group Chief Executive Officer, is setting the tone in this video for why as an organization, you know, they should be someone that you're choosing. And again, winning the war on talent, as Erica was saying, is something that's really important in terms of showcasing the organization, you know, what's important. And as we go beyond that, again, really nice kind of interactions of kind of, you know, life at meeting the teams, understanding the different facets of, you know, what it's like to work here. And you'll see this story here from uh, a warehouse worker. You know, I became a dad and wanted to be more present for my children. Again, an immediate kind of understanding of, okay, these guys understand that my work-life balance is really important. So again, finding that role and that business that supports that front and center, clear messaging, really nicely done in terms of integrating kind of that kind of narrative. As we show some other examples, you know, I wanted to just take you through uh, Quilter um, and they have a really kind of nice way of using kind of very simplistic language to introduce things like learning and development. So you'll see here that, you know, your personal pro uh, professional growth is important to us. You know, that's why, you know, your manager was keen to support you. Very clear, very concise, easy to understand. And what I discuss with a lot of clients is understanding what they can say and what they can't say especially for those multinational international kind of corporations that maybe have different requirements for learning and development whether it be in the states or whether it be in europe or asia and also then you know those that are maybe operating in different countries around europe as well of what you can say but i think the important thing that a lot of businesses are realizing is that it's important to say something it's important to say that actually you will be developing there's nothing specific here about x amount of money for my learning or how much kind of you know how many courses i'll be going on but it's more an ethos and an understanding of how the business is going to support me. And it's also linking to things like rewards and benefits. And again, simply understanding, you know, you'll have competitive salary, bonus schemes, you know, core benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Not specifics, you'll get those with the roles, but more of an overarching kind of understanding of what the core benefits are. Um, and obviously then anything additional in terms of what's on offer as the organization kind of expands. The other element uh, Erica was talking about was diversity and inclusion. And again, a really nice example is uh, one of our own, uh, the Burberry uh, PLC site. Again, understanding what the commitment to uh, diversity and uh, uh, you know, equity and inclusion is to understand you know, how they're attracting or retaining top talent. And as I scroll through the page, you know, clear kind of messaging, you know, nice little parax scrolling, which is used elsewhere on the site as well. And they've got some really nice understanding of what the data is. And again, we're working with them at how we can pull out maybe a few more stats a little bit nicer to understand as an audience. But exactly what Erica was saying, it's not buried away in a report. It's not, you know, taken into account in terms of, you know, you've really got to drill down. Very front and centre, easy to understand, easy to, to kind of navigate to and really get a full understanding of what the organisation stands for as well. Right, thanks, Dan. So, uh, yeah, I think what we saw in that section was, um, as I say, you know, where you have a clear leadership from the top, you know, setting the tone staff, what you're saying there, perhaps, you know, reinforcing some of the values and purpose that we talked about in the earlier section, um, and, uh, you know, a greater emphasis around diversity and inclusion. So, um, Erica, should we uh, have a look forward about uh, how people are using the uh, website uh, to drive and enable active recruitment? Sure. Yes, uh, in the area of recruitment, again, um, we do see this year an uptick in a lot of markers in this area, in particular, the ease uh, for candidates to search and apply. Um, I guess the, to, we, we have, um, you know, most of the companies at 80% showing current opportunities uh, and, and the ability to search and apply is, is up there. But the, uh, we do see the bigger increase year on year on the ease of, of applying directly from the corporate website. And um, similarly, we do see an increase in the number of companies outlining application process, although um, only 52% of companies currently do this. And uh, to improve transparency and candidate experience, uh, more should consider outlining the application process on their website, which is uh, rather important in this market in the wake of the great resignation. Um, and in the next role, we um, look at areas where companies will have an opportunity to engage uh, prospective talent in the long term as we 
as the role of HR is increasingly widening, um, going beyond just finding candidates and, 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 and onboarding them, uh, they actually include building relationship with potential candidates and trying to um, sell the company as, you know, trying to find the best match really. It's almost like a matchmaking industry. Uh, we see that more companies are providing more HR contacts this year on the corporate websites, up, up 70% from last year. Um, however, only about half of that accepts submissions for future opportunities, uh, which again, I think it's a missed opportunity given that uh, having a wider internal talent pool will intrinsically uh, help with the recruiting costs uh, for future, future opportunities that may arise. And um, I guess the, over again to Dan to see if he, can show us how some of these uh, sites look like in terms of recruitment. Thanks, Erica. So uh, let's uh, just go back to our browser. Okay, uh, Imperial Brands, again, showcasing one of our own. And again, I, I mentioned the, earlier the signposting, I, I referenced it with William Hill. Here we're doing exactly the same user journey, but we're using a convention that allows us to understand that I'm going external to the website. So again, little understandings of, of how user journeys and works flow. A really nice kind of integration of, you know, calls to action front and center, clear messaging around the numbers, around the business, opportunities for, for what we're trying to do. And obviously then beyond that, you know, integration things like Glassdoor is something that we're seeing increasingly as that transparency increases. And Erica referenced the, uh, the matchmaking element to what we do. So it's important that you're getting the, the true uh, understanding of the audience, you know, the organization and what it's like to work there. We've also got some nice elements around meeting the team and different things that we've helped them kind of bring these stories to life uh, in terms of different things that are happening around the business. But what I wanted to just, you know, simply showcase to you is then, you know, how organizations then link simply again, similar to the William Hill example we showed you. But if I was to then choose marketing as my kind of, you know, preferred job opportunity, I can then click through and then go into my separate site with then using that consistent look and feel. Again, you'll see very much clearly in terms of the, the, the buttons, the imagery, you know, uh, the messaging, all kind of seamless in terms of what I'm looking for. And you'll also see from the, uh, the query that's already in the search term, it's already picking up the fact that I've asked it something. So again, I'm not having to input it again in terms of within the system. So again, you know, nice little kind of synergies about understanding how audiences can link through to different areas. We mentioned earlier around kind of, you know, locations and, and what it's like to work for a business and understanding more about kind of who they are. Nike do this, you know, position yourself anywhere in terms of the organization. So again, they're asking you what you'd like to find out about the locations within the career section for where they operate. So not only a 360 degree kind of immersive kind of experience, which is really quite nice, but also then if I want to find out more about each one of the locations, so you've got the world headquarters, you've got the European headquarters, you've got things around different kind of countries like New York and obviously beyond in terms of Shanghai. And then if I click on one of these to find out more about, you know, the European headquarters, what's there, what, what, what is the location, what are the benefits of working there? As you'd expect with a company like Nike, you know, world-class campus, you know, understanding, you know, there's different kind of facets, there's even a, a running track. Um, but again, understanding how they're creating this by, you know, giving you key stats about where it's located, understanding kind of how I can get there, the benefits and perks, you know, there's a very much a transparency and again, winning the war against talent in terms of bringing it to you and understanding how you can build that relationship and that rapport with people to really why they should be joining you as an organization. We've obviously experienced a very different 18 months to what we're used to. And a lot of organizations are, it's, you know, looking at different ways of how they can engage with, you know, prospective employees. Top Glove are an organization uh, based mostly predominantly in Malaysia, although an organization that works as well in Germany and the US and beyond. Top Glove, uh, for those that maybe don't know, are a glove specialist, as you would expect. Uh, one in four uh, glove, rubber gloves in the world are created by these guys, so they're a huge organization. And obviously with the pandemic, have ex, you know, expanded their remit into creating PPE and beyond. So a, a company that's really kind of gone places over the last couple of years in terms of expansion. And what they've done is they've created a, a, a virtual kind of careers fair. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the look and feel of this, but I think the, the messaging and the understanding of look, 
how do we engage with audiences? So, you know, I can click on the information desk. I can then understand, you know, click on the video. I can go to a user guide. I can navigate around and obviously and find out whether I'd be wanting to do anything around manufacturing and engineering. You know, there's things around the chairman's philosophy. Again, introducing that senior management piece that we were talking about earlier. And again, asking the team. Now, this is an event that's been and gone. So when it was on air, obviously there was the ability to ask the teams and live kind of interaction. But I do think it's a really interesting way of kind of engaging with audiences and seeing how those opportunities can manifest themselves to engage with you know, prospective employees. We mentioned earlier around um, uh, the Inmarsat site, and it's a, a site we're very proud of in terms of you know, how, from a career's point of view, you can then select obviously the different you know, jobs and understanding what it's like to work for business. But the specific element I wanted to showcase to you here is not just the ability to filter by you know, different departments, different locations, different jobs. But it's also this element of notifying me of jobs. And it's exactly what Erica was saying there about, you know, the future. What is it that I want to be finding out about? You know, what is my levels of experience? Create a job alert. So when I do have an opportunity, when there is something in the location that I want it to be in or the role I want it to be in, you're actually notifying the people that are right for you. So you're not missing that trick that Erica mentioned. And actually you're engaging with an audience that is prospective employees for the future. Therefore, you're building a little database and creating something that can be really powerful to engage with audiences. I've got a, a couple more examples here in terms of what we're kind of running through. Um, I guess Kingfisher, uh, again, for those who maybe don't know, B&Q, Screwfix, working across Europe and beyond, uh, a really kind of nice career site in terms of what it's like to, to looking for a role. Interestingly, what they're trying to do here is engage with audiences that are maybe looking at virtual interviews, thinking about how they can find the job, understanding their top tips for CVs uh, and different things. Now, I'm not quite sure why everything is published as November the 10th, 2020, uh, but that's a, a separate issue to this. What I really like is, you know, things around virtual interviewing, understanding what it's like, check your connection something I need to do obviously when I'm doing my uh, my webinars. Uh, you know, dress to impress again, you know, make sure you're you're wearing the right kind of clothes, but understanding what it means to an audience to kind of engage with the users at this time as opposed to maybe you know 18 months ago when things were a little bit different. In terms of then standard charter, they do a very similar kind of thing. And again, I really like this, you know, I've got here around early careers. I'm, you know, exploring, I've got different data, you know, elements, I've got, you know, if this little floating action button to apply now follows me down the page. But what I really like is then, you know, when I'm ready to apply, I've got application help and support. So I've got the ability to then click through and understand, okay, what is it that I need to be doing? Am I eligible? What is the process? You know, these are really kind of nice ways of just engaging with the audiences, making sure they understand, especially from an early careers point of view, maybe graduates are, you know, understanding what they need to be doing, how they need to be applying. And again, hopefully, this is also helping your careers team reduce the amount of admin and questions they're getting, that maybe they can then direct people directly to the site and obviously add these elements in, in terms of what they need to be doing and accessing information. The final one I wanted to just show to you was, um, again, uh, Vodafone. So understanding kind of the, the virtual kind of nature of the business. This is their .co.uk, not the .com. But again, you know, meet our virtual starters. They've integrated a nice little bit of video. And the reason why I love this so much, obviously, beyond the fact that they include dogs um, in, in terms of their images, there's even dogs wearing sunglasses as well, which is always a winner. I mean, it just sets the tone as an organization. But just the Q&As, understanding the business, and setting the tone for who you are as an organization, it's just a really nice thing. You know, there's interview guides, you know, they're providing a lot of onboarding support. What is it like day one at Vodafone? So if I go beyond the, oh, they're funny, nice images, actually the content is really impactful as well. And I think this is, again, just aligning with how we can win that war, how we can make sure that matchmaking process is done, how we can understand the narrative of what users are looking for and really help empower them when it comes to that employee uh, employee development process in terms of getting them in and, and trying to make sure that they can you know, involve themselves within the organization. If we step back to the, uh, the presentation, I just wanted to kind of summarize, I guess, what, we, what we've seen. And I think that, that that battle for the best talent, you know, especially in scarce skills is becoming increasingly you know, difficult. 
we've mentioned earlier around kind of the, the different kind of facets of the, the great resignation. And this is something that we're seeing a lot of in terms of empowering employees who are making big decisions, you know, uh, understanding where they want to be living, understanding what they want to be doing, the work-life balance and beyond. And also then how the, uh, the reliance on digital helps that process in terms of attracting and retaining that talent. Because it's clear from what we've seen and different websites and different companies are doing it in different ways is that there's some really kind of key elements that we can help you with in terms of bringing that narrative to the fore, understanding how we can showcase purpose, understanding how we can develop the understanding of the business, showcasing the CEO, integrating the ATS to really give you a locked up, nice, interactive user experience that really engages with audiences. And what we've seen is, you know, greater investment in career sites and understanding that maybe that investment isn't necessarily in times of money, but it's also in terms of time. It's also in terms of content, making sure it's up to date and really engaging with the audiences. And those key three uh, themes that we've spoken about that Rich alluded to earlier around the purpose, how we attract talent and driving recruitment are more essential than ever in terms of how we tell that story. Cool, thanks, Dan. I mean, I, I do find it um, interesting around the whole kind of narrative for, in effect, creating a value creation story for an organization for their prospective employees. You know, as you say, you know, giving the employees a real sense of the organization's purpose and values and what it's like to, um, you know, to work there. You know, what the company is doing in terms of its overall contribution to society. Um, how you will actually individually develop, um, you know, as an individual, you know, member of staff, you know, your uh, talent and program for development, reward and recognition, because obviously those things are absolutely imperative for people, you know, thinking about joining an organization. So bringing that to life more and attracting the talent um, is a really important part of the mix. Um, and then thirdly, just, you know, we know now we're in the digital world more than ever. Um, and therefore, you know, all the research, you know, whether it be by CPD and the like, show that, you know, corporate website or a careers website um, is absolutely the number one place that people go to apply for a job, um, perhaps alongside, uh, you know, some of the agency sites and so on. And so we really need to make it work hard to actually drive and enable recruitment to build a prospect pool, a future talent pool and so on, as we've seen today. Um, so I think what, the, uh, what we've seen this year is a real reflection of enhancing career sites to reflect the huge shifts that we've seen in society uh, as a result of COVID, remote working and so on. Um, and I think that will only continue um, as, uh, as we look ahead. I suppose therefore it leads to, um, you know, the next slide, which is, you know, if you'd like us to, you know, look at your career site um, and, uh, you know, how perhaps share a bit more in detail around some of the trends, overview of how you perform. Um, we can also do a deep dive, uh, you know, analysis if you wish um, around how you uh, perform against your peers and really target some of the specific weaknesses or opportunities in your individual career site. So if you'd like us to do that piece of work, then uh, feel free to get in touch. Um, we'd be very happy to talk to you. I'm very happy as well to take any uh, questions. I can't see any in the chat or in the Q&A um, so far, um, but if there are any, do shout. Um, in the meantime, um, as I say, there's a link there to view the results in the detail in the website, which will be uploaded today. Um, and our next event is around uh, developing a great user experience on the 15th of September. Um, what I would say is go to our, uh, our website for other events. You know, we've got a couple of great upcoming uh, events, uh, actually interesting one on purpose uh, later in the week. And so do go there and look at our other events because there are some uh, related topics there that you may find of interest. Um, and we'll uh, happily send out the uh, presentation to people that have attended today. Um, so feel free, as I say, to ask any questions. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll wait a minute or so to see if there are any questions. But thank you very much for your time so far today. One, one question from, from our side, Rich, might be the, uh, the query of whether to have a, a separate career site versus integrating it with the, uh, the PLC. That might be uh, one to, to start with, which I think is often the elephant in the room when it comes to how we, uh, we integrate kind of content. Yeah, it's true. Um, I mean, I think there's probably no right or wrong answer. So it depends a little bit on the organization and what you want to do. I suppose the, uh, the advantage of integrating it is even more seamlessly communicating their purpose and values and so on. Whereas creating a separate site perhaps allows you to use a slightly different um, kind of creative style and you know language and so on. I mean, what do you think? 
I fully agree. I mean, uh, it really depends on the uh, the technology you've got and the flexibility you've got within the system. So for us, you know, creating things like CCH, you know, the uh, the Imperial site, the Inmarsat site, we're able to create the careers section that integrates with everything you've just said in terms of the ability to kind of showcase the different areas of the business and the, the wider narrative, but also then linking up things like the ATS kind of systems as well. So I think, you know, finding that happy hybrid of allowing users to really kind of immerse themselves because what we've seen from the analytics is that users are navigating through the site they're going from careers they're interested in purpose they're looking at the the, the kind of the, the wider business maybe business model thinking about the results thinking about the sustainability section so very much my preferred option is to integrate where possible but i also realize that sometimes there's limitations in terms of time and budget that allow you then to maybe create these separate sites that are a little bit quicker to go to market if you are, you know, limited with the technology maybe that you've got to play with. Yeah. Speaking of the integration element of it, there's something um, that came up uh, when we were doing the research, uh, a question around what are your thoughts around, you know, uh, companies who may want to use external uh, party suppliers in terms of uh, recruiting suppliers such as Workday, for instance, um, in, in integrating as part of their career sites for, for applying for jobs. Uh, we've seen some where the integration is quite simple, where it's this slap on the company logo and just links it. But um, you know, what are your thoughts on that and whether that can be can work or not really when it comes to telling the whole uh, career narrative? Mm -hmm. I think it's a really interesting challenge and that user experience is something that we're talking with uh, with clients right now about in terms of how they can work out what their internal systems are versus then how they're communicating that externally. I've got one uh, one client who's got you know different you know HR systems from around the world so you're mm. you're dealing with a myriad of different requirements and what we're doing is creating a funnel that allows you then to select firstly where you're located and then what you're interested in and then you go off into the various kind of uh, you know systems mm. i don't think again aligned with what rich was saying earlier there's probably a right or wrong way of doing it but i do think we've always got to think about the user experience we've got to think about the taxonomy the findability the understanding of the user to really kind of engage because what we don't want to do is we don't want to turn them off we don't want to kind of disengage them we want to be making sure that we're making it as seamless and easy as possible to engage with with us uh, on that level and understand uh, you know from a a careers point of view how they can apply yeah there's a great question from sarah in the um, in the chat here around um you know that that point which is um you know lots of uh, job board companies are trying to bypass and affect the career sites and just integrate straight with the ATS, uh, basically mm. to get a more unified kind of application through and so on um and she's asking you know whether that's a good plan or not um i suppose it depends a little bit on um you know, to your point, down the user journey, really, which is, you know, you don't want it to become an entirely transactional arrangement where people just, you know, scat the gun looking for, you know, say a project management role or whatever, and just applying to any company that goes on the job board, which is uh, often a risk mm -hmm. without actually communicating the ethos and uh, purpose and so on of the company. Um, so I'm always a little bit, I mean, you want to be able to um, speed the uh, process for application, I get that point. Um, but having the ability to communicate that wider story, which many uh, obviously uh, integrated systems don't enable people to do. What, how, how do you feel about that then? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I referenced the Inmarsat system where we're linking out to ATS, but from the user point of view, it's all within the, the site. You've also then got the likes of Imperial where you have to step out. But I think, you know, for me, you know, the ATS is a very specific tool that helps from a back end point of view. And what we don't necessarily want to be doing is making sure that we're duplicating content from a, a corporate site point of view, you know, referencing things in multiple locations. And you saw earlier from the Spirax example where they've got, you know, a disjointed kind of branding as well, how that may be confusing users. So again, a tough challenge, but one that we've helped a number of clients you know, with in terms of how they can seamlessly uh, interact that. So Again, something maybe uh, we can get in touch with Sarah. Right? Yeah, because you know, ideally, if you can integrate the ATS, but in that ATS system, find both, you know, through the website, you know, all the other, um, you know, wider narrative, that probably be a good result to go. So you kind of enable the speed to uh, apply, but actually uh, give them the opportunity to engage wider would be better, probably. But 
happy to talk further, Sarah, if that would be of help. Cool, well, great. Thank you very much for uh, all the questions. Um, I think that's been covered now. Um, thank you for your time today. And as I say, do get in touch to uh, if you want to talk further about uh, building a great career site. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.